Well, we probably imagined that we would have found ourselves on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic by now, but the o Omicron variant had different ideas. And throughout these difficult times, the city has had to continue making important decisions on our behalf. This show gives you an opportunity to connect with your city councillor and, of course, for them to connect with you. Welcome to Ward Updates 2022, a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with Ottawa City Councillors. We're going to discuss a number of important important issues uh, during these discussions, issues that affect you, your family, and of course, your neighbors. My guest today is Teresa Cavanaugh, City Councillor for Bay Ward. Welcome, Teresa. And let's just start off. Uh, I'm asking everyone this because I always like to talk to people on a, on a personal level before I get to the business of, of discussing City Council and, and issues that are important to their constituents. But how have you been? How about your, your, yourself and, and your family through this pandemic so far? I think I'm very, very fortunate. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm able to work from home as, as everyone is. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's a good situation for me. Um, I don't have little kids to worry about running around um, trying to do their work. Um, I certainly hear the stories about others and yeah. um, I've able to get outside too. So that's another important part, uh, which is in a very important part of my lifestyle is, uh, for work-life balance is to get outside once in a while. Maybe I won't tonight, but in, in some, <laughs> when it's really frigid, <laughs> but, uh, but I try and get out regularly. And so it's, it's comfortable. Um, but yes, there's challenges when you can't talk to people in person. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's hard. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. How, how has it changed your, as far as your role as a, as a city councillor and be able, being able to communicate with your constituents? Well, uh, I've been fortunate, but we rely so much on technology and I, I am concerned about those who don't have the technology. I've been having lots and lots of virtual meetings, uh, Zoom, whatever. And um, so we're able to get through what is necessary, for example, coming, you know, developments that are coming up and, and other important meetings on, on information. We've, we've got so much happening here in, uh, in Ward 7, Bay Ward, and uh, mm -hmm. we need to get that information out. However, we're relying on technology and uh, uh, for the most part, uh, people have been responding well. We've, we've gotten good attendance, but you do worry that you, you can't reach everybody. And, and that is a concern. And, and just that ability to go to them to go to places, to buildings, and and just have those casual chats where you learn a lot more sometimes than a formal meeting. And so, Councillor Cavanaugh, so you know, we've... Yeah, I was going to say that we, we've heard, you know, the impact of the pandemic and certainly the negative results of all that. But we've, all, we've also heard about some positive stories and, and some success stories in your ward in particular. You know, have can you share with us perhaps a, a positive story that, that you've seen during the pandemic? Well, um, it, it happened before the pandemic, but it was fortuitous that we got started uh, a winter trail. Um, it's called the Britannia Winter Trail, and it actually started in 2019, and um, it, just as a pilot project. And by the time the pandemic came along, it was realized that it was a necessity because it was an opportunity to people to be outside and physically distance, especially since they couldn't go very far. This was in their neighborhood. So extremely positive uh, 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 results on it. And um, I, I was just out on it today. It, it's fantastic. It's community based and, uh, and it's free to everyone. And, and it was, it was using a park that was just filled with snow and nobody could go there. So it flattens out trails for people to walk on or ski on snowshoe, uh, fat tire bike, whatever yeah and, but yeah. They're outside and, they're, and they're connecting when people are outside they can talk to their neighbors even if you know they're physically distanced and all that but they're out so that was a really good news story I have others. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you and you have, uh, you know, it's a really special place, your ward, and you know, not taking away anything from any other ward. Every ward is is very special in in their own way. But you know, you mentioned Britannia, and you have Bayshore, and you have, you know, Mud Lake, and and Shirley's Bay, and all these wonderful gathering places. So, 
I mean, it's, you know, someone like yourself that, that, you know, looks at the outdoors as a great opportunity, not only to get exercise, but to socialize. Is this, you know, is this trail perhaps inspired you to, to, to work with your, your constituents to find out more opportunities in your ward? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're always thinking about outside. Um, we have great resources and it's how to make the best use of them. Britannia Park is is a real gift. It, it's beautiful. Yeah, you talk it's a about real gem. Lake. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's very special. So um, yeah, we're it, it, it and what's you know right in your neighborhood, your your own small park that's in your neighborhood, um, plus all the um, NCC land we have here. We have a great big chunk of the green belt here as well, in uh, Bay Ward. We're very very fortunate, uh, and I think people are starting to discover it. This is becoming a, a, a very popular place. I know something you're proud of is um, being appointed the first women and gender equity liaison for the for, for, for city council. Uh, what have you accomplished in that role so far? Well, um, I have to say it was daunting when I first got the role. It was like, congratulations, you're responsible for half of Ottawa. And, uh, <laughs> no kidding. Uh, yeah. Maybe a bit more. Uh, but... Um, it really is about um, putting the gender lens on everything. And I've certainly learned a lot. Um, there's two sides to it. One is internally, how are we doing internally? How are we treating our own employees our, and staffing opportunities? How are we promoting women? And, and we're getting better and better. We have so many um, success stories. Um, it's, and of course, it's about our services and and how we're, we're treating our our, uh, our residents. So um, we've had many opportunities. That we've had great workshops where we've reached out to um, a vast number of people. Um, and it's it's been very good to hear what people are concerned about. And I can tell you that uh, what women are concerned about, probably the number one issue is housing, which you can mm. imagine is important to everybody. Yeah. Um, and um, if you can't afford, if you're, income is lower and you've got small children and you're paying for daycare you've got a lot of economic issues that are concerned so so these are things that we have to advocate for um, we need the other levels of government to help us out um, but but those are the things that we hear and we can advocate for them you know, we're winding down this term of council as we get closer and closer to the October 2022 election. What are your goals for this term of council? Um, well, it's it's wrapping up and uh, it's to keep the communications up. Uh, we've got the LRT stage two going right through my ward. It's the yeah. most intense part of the system. There's seven new stations. So uh, a lot happening, a lot of construction, um, and we want to see progress on that. It's interacting with residents. It's been pretty tough. Uh, I'll, I have to say residents have had to put up with a lot of noise um, and inconvenience with the construction. But um, you know what? The end goal is going to be worth it. We're going to have uh, a great system. We're going to have um, LRT st stretching right out to Moody. Um, and maybe beyond soon, but uh, um, right. so those are the kinds of things I want to make sure go well and keep those relationships up, but also just um, working with communities on, on what we can do in their own communities to, to help them and, uh, and, and help them enjoy their, where they live. You sound encouraged about phase two, you know, with all the difficulties that we've had yeah. in phase one. And I'm not laughing because it's a laughing matter, but, you know, a lot of people are exasperated. And, uh, but ha you, you sound encouraged, you know, when, when we look at uh, phase one right now, and I, I, do you think we're ready to put some of that behind us now and, and encouraged to see how the system is working at, at this time? Well, let's face it, it ain't been easy. And, and yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was not happy. I, I was not happy as long with many residents. Um, it, it's frustrating and um, it makes it harder to justify all the work that's going on for stage two. But uh, I'm trying to take it as lessons learned and we're gonna do better. We're gonna make it um, a more positive experience um, for stage two and we're gonna, and we're gonna make it so that it, it works. We have to. It, it's so necessary. Um, I, I just can't think of us as a, a grown-up city, as it were, 
without having a, a fast rail system. We, we need it. And um, I'm very proud that there's, there's going to be seven stations here that's going to be convenient for people. Um, there's going to be growth, of course, that goes along with it. So we have to manage that. We just mm -hmm. did an official plan that revolves around it uh, because it's about uh, being close to transit. It's about being in walking distance of, uh, of what you need. So, so there's, it, it's kind of the center of, of what we want to do as a city. I'm glad you mentioned walking distance because I, I did a little bit of research uh, of my own um, and, and just to look at, you know, we're, we're talking about this more walkable community, more walkable city and many new developments, uh, you know, kind of lack in that walk and transit score. So as a whole, from what I've, you know, from what I've been able to, to discover in my research, the, the city of Ottawa has a walk score of about 45 out of 100. Uh, transit score is about 50 out of 100. The cycling score is actually one of the better ones when you look at different communities across the country. We're at about a 64 out of 100. Um, how, how can you see in your role, how can you help the city sort of improve upon those numbers? How do you think we can go about doing that? What are some, what's, what's some of the things that, you know, in your experience, you feel we can do better? Well, first of all, listen to residents and, and hear what they have to say about what would get them out walking and, and cycling and using transit. So you've got to work on that. One of the things that I keep pushing on the transit, it's one thing to build the transit station. It's another to have the connectivity to get there, which is the walking part. So you have yeah. to make the connectivity very good. And um, so that's a that's an ongoing challenge um, because it's a it's a real crisscross. But we we have to do that. So uh, I'm I'm a cyclist, so I'm 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 always watching on the on the cycling. Um, we've got mm -hmm. a, a transportation master plan in in the works, and um, in fact, I have a meeting coming up to to discuss it, so people can point out the things that concern them that prevent them from getting where they want to go, um, either as a pedestrian or cyclist. Yeah, you're holding your first uh, Bay Ward meeting, if if I remember correctly, on February 7th. What are, what are some of the issues you'll be discussing during that meeting? Well, there's some very specific uh, points in terms of, um, do you agree that this is important? For example, a new sidewalk here or um, a passageway there. So it, it's discussing those uh, points that have been raised by the city because they've seen uh, a need. But um, it, the residents themselves have to come forward and say, yes, this is really important. And we need to prioritize uh, the points that are, uh, you know, of, of, uh, of need. And um, it's, it's happening. So it's a good dialogue. I want people to understand that their voice is, is being heard. So um, this is an opportunity to, uh, to discuss it with, and we'll have city officials there, of course. Um, Bike Ottawa always comes out, and uh, I, I really appreciate that. Um, we're moving forward um, bit by bit, and uh, I appreciate when, when people get involved. Well, you're part of that cyclist community, cycling community. You mentioned uh, Bike Ottawa, who's a, a great voice for, for the cycling community. What are some of the frustrations you hear from cycling? My wife and I are cyclists as well. You know, you have certain parts of the city and listen, you know, some of it's because we built cities much differently, you know, many, many generations ago, you built a city much differently without cycling in mind where you have all of a sudden, mm -hmm. a tr you know, a cycling path ends and then you've got to find where you can connect over again what what are the what are the issues as far as cyclists goes one of the things i think that bothers me the most in in this city and other cities across canada is this great divide between cyclists and and people that that are you know that, that are driving vehicles when I don't think there needs to be that much conflict happening because everybody can share the roads but but what are you hearing well, at every opportunity, we hope that they can be separated uh, as much as possible so we can avoid those conflicts. I think that mm -hmm. helps a lot. Um, and of course, that means road space. So it takes time to, to implement that. It, uh, <laughs> I, I'm working on that for uh, Richmond Road, for example. Um, and uh, I'm excited to have the fact that they're, they're separating the cycling from from the sidewalk and from the uh, from the road. That's another thing is we tend to um, blend in pedestrians and cyclists together. Um, yet we don't want people to ride on sidewalks. Yet we we build multi-use uh, pathways. Um, so there's kind of a right. contradiction there. Um, 
you know, we, we, we have good leisure paths. Um, the, the NCC network is great, but we tend to, in the past anyway, we built for Sunday riding instead of Monday riding for commuting. Um, right. And I've done, I've done both. Um, uh, I used to commute uh, for over 30 years and, uh, and I've, I've, uh, I've seen it that, uh, yes, as you were saying, there's that, what I call poof factor. You get to a point and it's like, the the bike infrastructure disappeared <laughs> <It's kind of laughs> <went>. yeah <laughs> yeah i'm going to use that with my wife i like that the the poof factor that's very yeah. good uh, let's yeah. go back to transit just for a moment uh, public transit you know we're, we're we're seeing obviously because of the pandemic uh, ridership numbers have gone down uh, unbelievably and I think there's, you know, a lot of people thinking this is a bit of a fairy tale that we're going to get back to, you know, the numbers that we saw pre-pandemic as, as quickly as some members of city council are saying we may get to it. Uh, and then we see a 2.5% increase in, in fares. Is that... Is that the right way to go when we're trying to get people out of, because people have created new habits. Maybe they're taking their bike to work now instead, which is great, but a lot of people are back in their cars and that, that vehicle becomes a habit and it's really difficult to take people out of a habit and get them back on the public transit. What can we do to encourage people to get back onto public transit and to, you know, and that, that it goes without saying it has to be reliable, affordable and convenient, right? Yes, no, there, there has to be incentives. And you're right about the fares. I, I did not agree with that. I didn't agree with a, a fare increase. Um, it's it's problematic, it's a turnoff. I mean, we go from having free transit in December, uh, free rides, and then January, you're adding an extra cost. Uh, that, that concerns me. And um, it, 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 doesn't build, <laughs> it doesn't build an audience, it does uh, ridership. So um, yeah, no, we, we have to look at that. Um, I think we do need to examine who was using it in December, for example, um, and find out um, what we can about how we can grow. I, I, I am concerned about uh, the fact that there's many people that that's their only choice and we need to make mm -hmm. it good for them. Um, and that's, that's important as well. So um, no, we, we need to encourage people and we have to look at it holistically. If we're um, improving roads and, and uh, making things easier to drive, and I, I don't mean that we're not going to improve roads at all, but I'm, I'm saying that if we lean towards um, catering more to cars and, you know, have lots of parking or whatever, then what incentive does anyone have to, uh, to take transit if, it's, if the uh, car driving is, is more convenient? So well, that we can't be our only it. traffic solution, right? We, we, we can't yeah, just look yeah, at look how at we it. can make it easier. We have to look at every mode of transportation that, that, that's available and then encourage people to use every mode of transportation possible to, you know, for a number of yeah. re reasons, you know, certainly the environment yeah. is, is a great reason, but also just, you know, physical activity, mental health. You, you just described how, you know, mm -hmm. you're earlier, how you're getting out and enjoying, you know, the cross country ski trails. I, I live by the Rideau river. We have trails here as well. And, and we're seeing them mm -hmm. sprinkled throughout the city finally. Right. And using, you know, embracing winter, instead of trying to just cocoon and hibernate for the whole time, you know, let, let's encourage people to get out there and, and enjoy it. Uh, let's go back to your ward for a moment and, and look at, you know, some of the issues that, that you're facing in your ward, some of the challenges that you're facing, or what are you hearing from your constituents that are specific to, to your ward? Well, um, I mentioned already about the LRT and that's going through and uh, what it's driving is development. So, so there's change coming, it's growth. Um, we're right. going to see intensification. That's part of what we, we voted on with the official plan. Uh, we said we want 60% of our growth to be um, within the urban area rather than um, more expanse. And um, that means uh, there's going to be more people in those boundaries in, in older neighborhoods, such as in Bay Ward. Um, you're going to see uh, more development. Um, unfortunately, it's coming in the form that people are finding difficult because a lot of towers, um, right. you know, um, but, and, uh, or, or semi-detached homes on a street where it was all singles before. These are things that are pretty hard on, on people that have lived in a neighborhood for a while. They, the change is, is, 
is overwhelming sometimes, but um, we, we do have to figure out ways um, to have more people living near uh, transit, um, living centrally, uh, because for all those reasons we talked about earlier, like climate change um, and just um, having a better a lifestyle, um, walkability and resources nearby, so you don't have to drive everywhere to get to things. So for all those reasons. So, so those are the things that are happening in this area. It's, uh, it was happening more in uh, like a Westboro area. Now it's moving yeah. further west as, as, uh, as the uh, transit system uh, grows. Uh, how do you so you know just some on, on some of these issues I, I guess you know, the question is how do you plan on uh, involving residents in in the decision making process I know that you know that there's always available going online and, and sharing your 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 ideas and you know reaching out to your to your local city councillor using social media how can we get residents mm -hmm. more involved in, in the decision making process well, um, we have a number of meetings. Um, I usually have over and above what is required. For example, if a, a developer puts in an application, I'll try and have a meeting as early as possible, even before they have uh, put in their application so that residents can have a chance to ask questions. It's not always the answers they want to hear. Sometimes they're following the rules to the letter uh, for the, what the city puts out, but they do have that opportunity. Um, yeah, it's not easy, um, but um, there, uh, we we have to keep the dialogue. We have to get the information, and um, and we've been managing that. So um, we do have very good attendance. Uh, people are very interested in what's happening in their neighborhoods, so they come out. Um, and this is, of course, virtual meetings. They're online. Yeah, and you know that that's. I think you know there's such a big benefit for that. I think we made it so difficult for so many years to mm -hmm. to to hear from from residents right where you know you, you almost had to jump through hoops just to get you know five minutes in front of in front of city council so i think i, I you know i think we've yeah. done a pretty good job um speaking of city council you know we've often at times seen a divided city council we obviously are going to see some new faces we're going to have a new mayor coming in what what are some of the leadership qualities you think are necessary for the next mayor coming in to help perhaps bridge some of those divides well, I think we have to look at those two motions that we passed unanimously. Um, well, almost a man. I guess it wasn't totally unanimous, but there's two major uh, motions that uh, we passed, and I think those should be our template. One of them was on climate change. That has to be taken very seriously. You have to have that lens on everything we do. So are, are we um, doing things to uh, reduce greenhouse gases? Um, we committed to that. We said it was important that... Uh, that we're going to work together on that. So, so that has to be uh, a priority. As well, affordable housing is, is a big priority. Mm. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. That affordable, um, that, is, that is huge. And, and of course, I don't think we expected to see housing prices go the way they are. It's, um, it's just beyond reality for anyone starting out. Um, such a jump. It's okay for people who are already living in a house, but anyone who's who's uh, young families just can't afford to ha buy a house um, and uh, the fact that there's so little rental um, yeah it, it there's growth that ne is needed and as we discussed before it's it's hard um, when it's in older neighborhoods but but that's that's part of the mix we have to do and we have to work together on that and councillor Kavanaugh is it not the onus on the city really right that the city puts in the regulations they need to work with developers I, I think we need to do a better job of forcing developers to do certain things when they mm -hmm. want to, when they want to develop when they want to add to a community you know whether that's you know green space walkability putting in sidewalks I live in a, a new develop a rather new development I would say about 15 years old now we don't even have a sidewalk um, so what responsibility does does this this council have in making sure they put in the things necessary to make you know the, the the lifestyle that we're looking for it's all well and good to talk about a walkable city but if you don't force the developers to make it walkable then you know we're, we're really going nowhere well um, I'm in an area where it's already developed and the problem is is because it was put in 60 years ago 
um, and there was no sidewalks, it's a tough one to put those sidewalks in afterwards, um, you know, adding it. I, I, I'm not familiar uh, which neighborhood you're talking about, but I'm dealing with neighborhoods where the sidewalks didn't exist at all. For whatever yeah. reason, they didn't yeah. in. And um, now in some cases, it's, it's not as urgent as others. Um, so there has to be some prioritization. But I'm finding that um, with the city, um, we don't um, have as many on the priority list as we'd like. Um, you know, we all have our priority list and, and some get bumped off because the, the funding's not there. We, we didn't put in for that. At some point, when you talk about sidewalks, they have to be paid for, and we haven't prioritized that. It's one thing to talk about having them in, but um, did we put that in the budget? Did we say, let's have more sidewalks, and this is the, the budget we're going to put in? And that's, that is the missing piece of the puzzle. Um, so um, we have to keep doing that. I'm fortunate that I'm getting some because of the LRT system. It's kind of right. added on because we needed that walkability. So that we're getting a few that way, um, but there's so much more to do. Um, it just, just making everything more walkable. Um, there, there's other ways to look at it as well. In some cases, um, the, the streets are so narrow, they, they don't even fit in. I have, you know, I have yeah. neighborhoods that, that don't even have, um, uh, you know, a, a storm sewer. So, um, you know, they have ditches. <laughs> so that makes it even more complicated yeah. to put in sidewalks but um, anyway we have to look at those priorities because uh, we have to uh, make streets walkable we have to make it so that kids can play and and get out so lots to do um, I've in my in my ward we've, we've had a lot of neighborhoods where we reduce the speed to 30k um, you know it to uh, put that message out there that these are where people live um, this is not a racetrack this is Mm -hmm. This is a place where you, you go, you go home, park in your driveway, but you're, you're not racing down the street. Um, we need to have some calming. Um, so we're always working with uh, traffic calming measures as well. So those are other way, other tools in our kit to make it uh, more livable. I've just got about 60 seconds left. Uh, you know, my last question would be um, COVID has, has hit city revenues. We're seeing a huge shortfall. You know, how do we make up for those? You know, and I, as a property tax payer, you know, I don't necessarily want to see our, our percentage go up, but are we putting off the inevitable? Some people wonder. Yeah, it's a really tough one. Um, we have leaned on um, asking for help from, from the province um, and the in the federal government because, uh, for example, um, running an entire transit system, they want us to meet our climate change goals, but we can't run it with, you know, uh, with less revenue. So, so the, right. we do need help. Um, this is, this is a partnership and we need to work together. So, Councillor so Cavanaugh, uh, uh, sorry, I just wanted to say, really appreciate your time and, uh, spending time with us today. And, uh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much All for right. asking. This has been another in the series of Ward Updates 2022. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Venus and Serena gonna shake up this world. I think you might just have the next Michael Jordan. Oh no, brother man. I got me the next two. <laughs> hey, how can I help you? It's me, Sophie. There's people in the house. Just stay calm. We need to get you to the basement and wait for the cops. Is there anything in my way? Wait, Sophie, wait! 